A Spanish gallery in Bishop Auckland might seem rather an odd thing to do, but the reason was because of Auckland Castle and the pictures by the Spanish old master painter Francisco de Zurbaran, which was in them. And I spent quite a lot of time trying to work out how to integrate these two things. And I felt that the best way to do that was to have a Spanish gallery which put into context those pictures in the castle. There's quite a tradition of Spanish art in the northeast of England. The Bays Museum, which is just 12 miles away, has 86 old master Spanish pictures. Here we have about 120, I think. It's amazing that the two biggest collections of Spanish pictures should be within 12 miles of one another here. Where we put it was a, quite an important thing, and I very much wanted this building, which is an old bank. It's, it's really a cod Venetian doge's palace, uh, inspired by John Ruskin, and it sums up the glory days of Bishop Auckland. The Backhouse Bank had become a Barclays Bank, and then in the 1990s, it became a nightclub. And it was in a pretty poor state of repair when Jonathan bought the building and the adjoining building, the former Barrington School. So our architects had quite a challenge to link these buildings without entirely losing a sense of what little remained of the original character, particularly of the bank building. This was a complete and utter wreck of a building, probably uh, fit purely for demolition purposes only, uh, if it hadn't been for somebody to have the vision to convert it into what it is today. We really had to start from scratch with a group of paintings and works of art and a building that was in the course of being created on the other. The first challenge was to create a coherent narrative for the gallery. And that took a lot of very detailed thought, research, and then working with our designers to express our ideas. There has been a huge amount of collaboration going on in this project, um, all the way back to the beginning when we got involved. Meetings between ourselves, the client, the architects, the conservators, all the way through to now to all of the different contractors, the electricians, the fit-out contractors, the AV specialists, the lighting specialists. Everybody's had to have their input and their discussions to make sure that this has been working and is going to give the impact that is needed. You arrive at a site, you look at plans, you see a space and, and try to make sense of it. And the way of making sense of this space was to, to try to rationalise the, the chaos of, of the, the existing envelope, if you like, and to create a series of unique spaces within that. This whole floor really is, is designed to act as a portal to 17th century Spain and the, the period around the collection that Jonathan has assembled. It. And these include architectural details and, and things, elements of, of buildings that were very characteristic of that period and the different groups of people who were living together. They show this, this unique mixing of, of Arabic, um, Islamic, Jewish and, and uh, Christian influence. It really should be a way that, that instead of looking somehow at a distance at these paintings and objects, you're suddenly surrounded by them, you're suddenly within this world. You're not an outsider looking at it, but you're, you're in it. I have tried to bring into this gallery pictures that hardened visitors 
of Spanish art could never expect to see. The majority of the collection is owned by the Zerbrun Trust. Then the, the second largest collection, I suppose, is on loan from Jonathan Ruffer, who's the, the founder of the Auckland Project. But then there are, there are loans around, from around the UK and from around Europe and the world. So we've got paintings on loan from the Colomer Collection in Madrid. We've got a partnership agreement, so there are 12 paintings here, paintings and sculpture from the Hispanic Society of America in New York. We've also got paintings from Dulwich Picture Gallery. We've got a, a large Velázquez downstairs from the National Gallery and then there are a variety of regional and national lenders as well. Everything we've done is a facsimile, is a copy. So there's a two-way relationship between the Spanish Gallery in Bishop Auckland and their Spanish partners. And I think the great thing is that often there's more than two involved. There might be three or four different people involved and everyone benefits. Deep copying leads to much deeper understanding. And the goal here is to get people to walk in and to feel the wonderful, magical complexity. Unless you were told, I think most people would think this was a painting, not a print. But this is print technology absolutely at the limit of what's possible at the moment, from 3D scanning to elevated printing technology that builds up surfaces in five micron thick layers, which are then molded and cast and backed with canvas. So effectively we're transferring the whole relief surface of the canvas. And then in perfect register, we're applying the color. The art is only appreciated if it's seen. And so we want to have it seen, but we want to have it safe when it's seen. We want to put it in good hands. We want to be careful transporting it and installing it. And there are conservators there if, if the art starts to show its age. And this institution has that. It's been thought out. It's been considered. And they have considered the needs of their public. And that's exactly what we do. So of course, we're happy to be collaborating. The whole process is complex because one has to have a real understanding of each work of art and what kind of relationship we can build with an audience. And one has to remember that many of these paintings were created for sacred interiors, for an audience that was on the whole deeply devout. Many of these paintings were intended for churches or for the private collections of patrons who were themselves deeply religious. Now, we are trying to present these as works of art, above all, even more than acknowledging the spiritual or theological significance. This is one of uh, the 11 paintings that came from the Hispanic Society of America in New York for this Spanish exhibition. And uh, what we are doing now is uh, we are doing condition reports. So we, we want to make sure that uh, the paintings, all the works of art, didn't suffer during uh, traveling. In this case, we, we don't worry that much about the frame because the frame is modern. It's not, mm -hmm. a, it's not a period frame. So this painting arrived to Auckland in perfect condition. And we are happy for that. <laughs> The first picture you see when you come in uh, is the one that got away. In the castle, there are 12 originals and one copy. And when you come into the gallery, you see the last original. People often ask me why the bishop who bought the uh, pictures in the castle didn't buy the last one. And the reason was that he ran out of money. And given that he was nearly the richest man in England, I find that hard to believe. But anyway, it now belongs to a castle in Lincolnshire. And I know the head of the family, and she very kindly uh, uh, has lent us for quite a long period of time this picture. And um, that uh, sets the scene for the fact that there's a connection between the castle pictures and uh, the pictures in the gallery. Today we are installing our Luca Giordano uh, 17th century uh, painting and it's going to be quite challenging because uh, it's going to be uh, hung at uh, nine meters uh, height and we are going to need uh, two genies and it's going to require uh, a lot of preparation but uh, the result is going to be spectacular. 
And it was originally thought that all the installation was going to be done by the Spanish team, the people who are used to, to working with, with facsimiles at this very high level of complexity, but it was all done really beautifully locally. Here there's going to be the installation, it's rather dark still, but um, of an incredible tabernacle and it's El Greco's only known polychrome sculpted figure. The top of it has never been created before. It was designed by El Greco, but it never got built. And Factum found the notebooks that he'd made. And so what you're looking at there, although it's a recreation, it isn't actually a recreation at all, it's a creation of the top story of the mausoleum. This is, um, I hope, going to be one of the most exciting and enjoyable parts of the gallery. It's a very short AV installation. It runs for about three minutes. And what we're focusing on is one theme, one element in that great painting, one of the greatest paintings in the world, Las Meninas in the Prado. And what we're doing is to show a near full size reproduction of it, which will gradually come to life, light up, and show the main figures in the painting and discuss a little bit uh, their role and significance. One of the current challenges that uh, we are trying to resolve, which has only come to light whilst being here on site, is the exhibit behind me. It's been designed as an infinity mirror so that you get a repetition of the object inside the case. Unfortunately, because the glass is a semi-silvered mirror, what we find is that it's now picking up reflections from the other paintings which have been lit around about it. So what we're looking at doing is either replacing the film that's on the inside or replacing the glass door with something that has uh, got a lower opacity to be able to allow the, the visitor to view through the glass more while still retaining that effect of the repetition through the infinity mirror. This probably had a framework around it of carved and perhaps gilded wood. Of course, we have just this single panel. And so now we're about to frame it and include it in the appropriate section of this gallery. This is the El Greco here. Um, it's an extraordinary piece that's required a lot of very careful and delicate lighting. We'd spend a lot of time considering how to do it to keep the lights out of view and the painting perfectly illuminated. And we have to be very careful not to see a reflection of the light source in the painting. So we've done a drawing to explain technically how that works for every single artwork in the galleries. Here we've got the final labels for this gallery. And um, these are an essential part an essential aid, really, for visitors when they come to the gallery. There's quite an art in writing labels because you're confined to probably no more than 150 words. And to try and discuss a very complex subject in that few words is, I can tell you, a challenge. It's been a task for everyone, from the, the builders, the architects, to the exhibition designers and the curators. Working with a building, it's been remarkable seeing it come together and then obviously the final stage is getting the, the paintings onto the walls and getting them adequately lit. The last month has been frantic, so we're deeply relieved to have got to this stage a week before we open, when we've got 99% of everything in place, lit in principle, and pretty much ready to go. But it's this last week when there is always a sense of mm, excitement and anxiety, uh, with a touch of panic thrown in, will it actually be ready on time? What we have created here is something that is of significance throughout the world. Nowhere is it possible to see the story of Spanish Golden Age art outside Spain. You can go to um, the great galleries and see the lollipops, the pictures by Velazquez and Murillo and uh, El Greco. Now we've got, we've got excellent examples of each of those painters here, but what we have is something much different and I think more important here it is possible to understand this initiative by people in a distant country, in faraway times, that can speak to us directly.
This is a school of painting that has very seldom been equaled. And it also shows a, a, a religious consciousness, which is unusual. But then there's also secular art, still lives, landscapes, views of everyday life, which tell us so much about the age in which the paintings were painted. The people in this area, from Newcastle to Nottingham to uh, Leeds and maybe Manchester and Scotland and so forth, have it an easy drive, an opportunity to see some of the very greatest art uh, that one would want to see in this uh, area of Northern England. Spain wasn't the Spain we know today. There was uh, a kingdom that was being made, being broken, being joined, being merged. And I hope if people come and look around here and just engage in the stories that are being told, they'll get a magical experience. Many of these works, even the still lives, have religious values built in, contemplative values that have no specific uh, faith. They're broader and more universally human than that. And I think people will find a refuge here from whatever the rest of their life is. And I think they ought to embrace it. Spanish art is intense, compelling, powerful. And I would like to think that in this space, we've created an ensemble that shares those characteristics. Well, this is the best evening of all because we've opened the gallery and this evening is the occasion on which we thank everybody who has really worked hard to create this gallery. So all our contractors are here, building contractors, everyone who's worked on the lighting, the installation of the works of art. And now we have a gallery, we have the paintings, and most important, we have people looking at them and discussing them. And nothing can be more important than that in a gallery. The joy is seeing all of these paintings come together from all across the world, things that wouldn't be seen in the UK. I mean, none of the Hispanic Society pictures have been seen in the UK at all, let alone in Bishop Auckland. So they, they have kind of two El Grecos, two Velazquez, multiple Murillos in, in the northeast and in Bishop Auckland is astonishing. The building itself and the restoration of the building, I think, you know, is a great achievement. Um, but then to fill it um, with this private collection, but also to go out and digitise works and bring to the people experiences of other places that otherwise they might not see, um, is quite amazing. It's a stunning collection of work here in Bishop Auckland and for me uh, it, it captures so much that is great about Durham but also so why we can speak internationally uh, as a county that we want people from all over the country and all over the world to come here and work like this will attract people from everywhere. It was a dilapidated building full of damp, rotten um, and to see it today, it's just absolutely breathtaking. Never in my wildest dreams would I ever expected it to look like, you know, how magnificent it is today. It's, it's a true you know, masterpiece for Bishop Auckland and it's something that we should all be very, very proud of. I think anybody now looking at Spanish masters, wherever they're based around the world, they'll put a pinprick in Bishop Auckland and it'll be somewhere for them to visit. I would like Bishop Auckland uh, to become the place where people come from all over the world who are English speaking to study Spanish art. Spanish art academically is going through rather a, a lean place at the moment and I'm an investment man and when I see a vacuum, I, I don't mourn the vacuum, I see an opportunity to fill the vacuum and that's what we're doing here.